evening, brethren. I want to welcome you to today's family devotional. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogbo Yega. With me is my wife, Pastor Mary Omogbo Yega. We really appreciate you for being with us on this platform always. Sincere apologies for we have not posted as many or as many videos as you would have wanted these few days, especially in the past two weeks or so. Like we said, we give glory to God for He has kept us busy for something good, which we are we have been busy with. And by his special grace we are back now. You will be seeing our videos. Um please remember to share our videos, subscribe to our channels, press the like button. Um it is very important that you also press the notification button so that you get notified when our videos are re released, new ones in particular are released. And then, as I said, we have it more than enough materials for you to use even on this channel every day because we have close to 600 materials now and um, they are still counting so there's no time you get there they don't have new materials to review god bless you then um we thank you indeed for being with us let us pray Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Daddy. We bless you, Daddy. We honor your holy name. Thank you, Daddy, for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for safety, security. Thank you indeed for our individual lives. We really appreciate you for our family lives. We also thank you indeed for our national lives. Thank you indeed for planet Earth and how you care for every body everything that you have created here and thank you lord for your heavenly places because you are at work 24 7. we appreciate you lord accept our thanksgiving in yahushua's name almighty father we thank you indeed for your supplies thank you lord for nigeria in particular for the election that just held we can see your hands in it you have done what, as a loving father, you should do. The rest is in our hands. And Lord God Almighty, we know that you will not even leave us at this point until your purpose is achieved. Daddy, you will not relent over us. Accept our thanksgiving in your virtuous name. King of kings, Lord of lords, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. Please, all our iniquities, forgive us in your virtuous name. Lord, we pray. Even those who have sinned against us, we forgive now. Please forgive them and all of us together in Yehoshua's name. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before your throne of mercy. We come before the dining table to feed the spiritual food. Please feed us well in Yehoshua's name. Today, let me not minister of my own wisdom, but from your divine direction, divine inspiration, divine wisdom in your Hoshua's name. Let lives be transformed. Let it be well with everyone who listens to this message. I know some of them are facing a lot of tasks in their lives. Please address them today. Meet them at the point of their needs. Meet me also at the point of my own needs in your Hoshua's name. Father, we thank you. Blessed be to your name. In Yahushua's name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, um, please let's listen to the Bible passage. And we are taking it from the book of Psalm 14. And then we are taking it together with Matthew. Matthew what, please? Matthew 16. Matthew 16. And then we are taking Genesis 45 45 to 47. These are the Bible passages we are going to take together and review. Then, um, let me say one thing. I think I will begin to number my recordings so that, it will, one, it will enable you to know the ones you have reviewed. You can even follow it from the beginning. 
Now, um, this one will be number 23 because the new approach we are using for our administration is to, you know, comb through the entire Bible. Because Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish from lack of knowledge and knowledge of me. Now, we want to have the real knowledge of God firsthand. We want to read through the entire Bible, God helping us, because it's, it's, it's an equivalent task. It's, I mean, I've tried it before, it never worked, but this time around, I pray it will work. Now, where we are now is number 23. I can call it day 23 or number 23. I think I should use number so that because years differ from years. So when I use number, you'll be able to see them serially. God bless you. So this is about the 23rd item that I will treat. So I will, when you see the title of this message, God help me. I hope I remember I put number 23. And then the next one will be 24 and so on and so forth. Then you can go back. I will try and see if I can still rename the old ones. I mean, put numbers on them. But if not, just go on with this. We are now in um, Psalm 14, Matthew 16, Genesis 20, 45. 45 to 47. We are reviewing all of them together. And the uh, model I'm using is um, the um, uh, Mickey Gumbel's model. That is the Bible he's, he uses. is the one that I'm using. And the passages are the passages I use, but our narratives are different. I mean, ours are totally different, but we're using the same Bible passage. So I will be able to cover the Bible in one year. So by the time you uh, listen to us for one year, you would have covered the Bible, the entire Bible. And then a lot of ministration would have come to you there. God bless you as you listen to us. Now, let's listen to Psalm uh, 14, I guess. The For, fool says in his heart, mm -hmm. there is no God. Mm -hmm. They are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Their deeds are vile. Mm -hmm. There is no one who does good. Mm -hmm. The Lord looks down from heaven mm -hmm. on all mankind mm -hmm. to see if there are any who understand, mm -hmm. any who seek God. Mm -hmm. All have turned away. Mm -hmm. All have become corrupt. Mm -hmm. There is no one who does good, mm -hmm. not even one. Mm -hmm. Do all these evil doers know nothing? Mm -hmm. They devour my people mm -hmm. as though eating bread. Mm -hmm. They never call on the Lord, mm -hmm. but there they are, overwhelmed mm -hmm. with dread. Mm -hmm. For God is present in the company of the righteous. Mm -hmm. You evil doers mm -hmm. frustrate the plans of the poor, mm -hmm. but the Lord is their refuge. Mm -hmm. oh, Oh, that salvation for Israel uh -huh. will come out of Zion uh -huh. when the Lord restores his people. Uh -huh. Let Jacob rejoice uh -huh. and Israel be glad. Uh -huh. God bless you, ma. We are grateful to God for this message. And uh, the title of today's message is We are sent to serve God and to save people we are sent to serve god and to save people this is number 23 of the review of the entire bible as we are going on so um we give glory to god for that passage which reminds us look bible says in the book of matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 39 that our purpose in life, primary purpose in life, is to love God with the whole of our heart, our might, our mind, everything, our being. And that the second one that is like it is to love our neighbor as our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. If you look at what um, the passage of today, the book of Psalm 14 that we read, is telling us, no wonder in the New Testament, when 
the someone called Christ and said, a good man. And Christ himself replied and said, there is no good man anywhere except who that the Spirit of the Lord dwells in him. There is no good man anywhere. And um, you see, this passage is reiterating the thing. What Christ said, you see, let me also remind you, everything that Christ ministered, including forgiveness, uh, for I mean, forgiving your enemies, praying for your enemies, and, um, you know, taking good care of the poor, taking care of the needy, the widows, the orphans, including um, this very statement that uh, he just made, that um, there is no good man anywhere, Everything that Christ preached, even when he was, when he, he got, he, he started his ministry, he said, you know, he started it based on Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 61 to 4, now if I'm correct, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, you know, and the appointed time to minister has come and so on and so forth. You know that there is nothing that Christ taught or preached that are not based on the Old Testament um, ministrations or teachings. Amen. If you are talking about um, uh, church, taking care of the church, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 4, the offerings in the church and all that, the kind of monies that are collected, as, they are all there. So even the foundation of Christ's ministration is rooted in the Old Testament. Amen. He has come to fulfill the entire... Look at what I'm saying now. This Bible is saying, this passage we read this morning is saying, there is no good man anywhere. No good man. Everybody has gone his own ways. Let's use a little analogy, practical analogy now, in the political arena. Nigeria today is where we are because of what we made of Nigeria. And we, the Nigerians, we did it. That's the truth. One, you see, if justice were to be, we would know that the Southeast is supposed to produce the president. But as things were going on, even Southeasterners did not follow themselves, did not favor themselves. They scattered things among themselves. Okay. Then South Side, South South that had just recently produced Jonathan Goodluck as president of Nigeria is still struggling with the power, wanting to take over. That's the weakest version. You see? And okay, <laughs> you can see the injustice. So. Wike struggle to get it as against the Southeast. He is from South South. Now, everything begins to play out, human manipulations and all that. Then not, the North says they will have it. You can see. And then now, in Southwest here, the struggle was also there. Southwest wanted to have it. Our local Abibeko. <laughs> now, the Southwest also staged a coup. Let me put it that way. Now, the result is out. It's in favor of the Southwest. Now, look at it. Yes, and Wiki has been crying of injustice. It is injust is just justice to him is if he became the president of Nigeria. But it's not justice to the Southeast who have not produced one president in Nigeria, apart from our late daddy, Dr. Namdi Azikwe. And the model then is different from what we have now. So it's as good as the Southeast has never produced anybody. Then, now... Look at it. Everything after all the struggles, it came to Southwest. And both the South-South 
the southeast, the north, everybody is now crying that <laughs> it is a stolen mandate. Now tell me, who has done justice? When you look at it from logical sense, and even by looking at loving your neighbor as yourself, that the Bible says, or by looking at, let it not be just I, I alone, but let, I mean, we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Who, who has done justice? May God just have mercy upon us. So whatever we get as a result of this vote or election, let me tell you, there is none of these parties that they didn't really go. It is just because and all of them cannot win at the same time. One is smarter than the other. You see, it's like we are just robbing Paul to pay Peter. And until we ourselves changed, and the people who are even waiting for our money this time around, if God did not censor them for you to take money and sell your conscience, they wouldn't have voted the way they voted. And look at, okay, look at the role of the church. The, the election that put Obi in the pedestal that he found himself is not an election based on um, justice. No. It's a protest vote. The church is against whoever it is. I think you have not had the Muslim, Muslim or, or whatever uh, argument before. The church voted in protest, not because that East deserves it. No, this time it is a protest vote. Okay, it's understandable that Labour took Lagos because of what? It's a protest vote. A protest vote in the sense that the youths of Lagos that were killed, you see, if there's anywhere that that injustice was manifest, it's Lagos. So one would not be surprised if massively the youths decided to go for Labour. It's a protest vote. And just like that, from different sectors, people are tired. And then a lot of people are tired. People like us are tired of PDP and APC. Like I said, the only thing that would, would have forcefully linked me with APC is Bola Tinumbu himself. Because he has, I knew his antecedents and I also have profited from his governance. There's nothing, no hiding that fact. Otherwise, I myself would be guilty of not acknowledging or of biting the finger that fed me. So, you can now see justice is now in the eyes of the beholder, not justice according to God. So, wherever we find ourselves, okay, where is the good man? Is it the northern person that is living there and not wants to take over that is good? Or is it the south south that just left the place and wants to return there at the expense of the southeast that has not tasted that presidential power or is it the southwest now that has done justice but also not i another source of obese vote this time is obasanjo is it, is, it, is it the interest of Nigeria that is pursuing? It's not. He has been an authority and he wants his whatever is. Has he not given us Yaradua? Has he not given us Jonathan? Has he not been giving us? Now he wants to give us Obi. And he canvassed his people, linking with Afeni Ferry. You see how much Afeni Ferry campaigned. You see, all those ones would have, uh, not because they are looking at sense of justice. Is they are all in protest. Afenifer is protesting that Ashiwaju has taken over the mantle of power from them at the grassroots, anywhere. They are waiting to avenge. Oba Sanjo and um, Tinubu will never see eye to eye. So it's a protest. It's not because Oba Sanjo loves the East. That's the truth. It's because Oba Sanjo just didn't want Ashiwaju to come in. But among all, the whole thing, look at what came out. We are now protesting. God will help us. 
God will help us. I think the, the Supreme Court is what we are waiting for. They will make pronouncement. God will help them. Justice according to man is not justice according to God. So, God knows how to help us. We only need God to help us. And we, like I said, we the people that are crying that we are manipulated. And we are the people that manipulate ourselves for a pot of soup. We are the Esau of this world that will sell our birthright. Now, even the whole voting that we voted is not about justice. It's about our stomach. May God help us. You can now see that the landmass called Nigeria is not the problem. God made it perfect. Everything needed is there. If we waste all these resources during our generation, the generations coming after we use it to their own benefit. But we are just praying, and I'm just praying that I live to witness the emancipation of Nigeria as a good state. And so shall it be. And God has spoken and he will fulfill it. When God spoke to me or revealed to me what Nigeria would look like, I've been talking about it in the past ministrations. It's not, he didn't tell me who will do it. He only told, showed me the picture of how Nigeria would be like. That's why I'm praying. Whoever that the Lord will use to do it, let him emerge as the final authority that he will use to deliver this message. So let us all keep open minds. I know the point quarreling with us. God bless you. Now I'm only saying this, that where is the good man? Even in the political arena. The same thing in the church of God. The leadership is manipulating, oppressing, exploiting, destroying the destinies of their followers. And Deception is everywhere. What God says, he has removed their practicing. It is just a the church of the Pharisees and Sadducees that we have now. And you can now see that where is the good man even in the church of God? You have the reports. They are clear. People being oppressed. The church is supposed to redistribute the wealth that they collected. If it is a good church, Supposed to redistribute the wealth that people contributed to the people. Are we not seeing a lot of deceptions? We are, you see, people are crying that churches established schools that membership cannot attend. But we now later discover that okay, many of these churches are the private businesses of the leaderships of these churches. All these Universities established by the GOs are owned by the GOs. So we now begin to understand. But they are deceptively using the names of the churches to run it. And because of that, we have the expectation that, well, if it is the church that owns it, owns, own the, the churches that own the universities and institutions, that members should be able to at least benefit from them. You see, you can see what manipulation can cause. They are the private, according to the sources, they are the private enterprises of this um, of these uh, geos. So, brethren, where is the good man? Let's leave that. Now, let's go to and if you look at what the Bible has been very emphatic about. God the Almighty has been very emphatic about. If you want a good man, you see that good man is the man that is taking good care of the poor, the needy, the orphans, the widows, everything. Even, even the psalm that we are reading, Psalm 14. Is it Psalm 16, is it? Is it 14 or 16? No? The one we just... 14. Psalm 14. He's still talking about... People have neglected the care of the poor. Right from someone we have been seeing things like that. And it's still there. Even in Proverbs that we are reading alternately. You see, if you want to think about a good person, that person must be somebody who's, who predominantly is taking care of the needy, the poor, the widow, the visitors, the, I mean, their parents, everybody. 
But where is the good man? Now let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 16, I guess. So, point one. A fool says there is no God. A fool says in his heart that there is no God. You know that we have been saying it. Anybody who does not acknowledge God is a fool. So if you are a professor, a GSE holder, whatever you are, you are a fool. A fool. A, 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 a full-blown fool. Because how can you deny your creator that he is not Lord over you? How can you say I mean, do you think you just come to be? You have been since eternity. When you are giving birth here to here through your parents, you come as a pilgrim to this world. You are on pilgrimage. And you are returning to eternity. You came from eternity. You have a temporary period here. And you are returning to eternity. And whether you go to heaven or hell is now the question. And if you want to be with Christ himself, you have gone to be on the side of God. You have to acknowledge your God through his son, Yehoshua. And then your eternity is certain. Let me give the example. You come to this world now. You are born in Nigeria. I'm sure if you are given the preference, you want to choose an advanced country. All right? But now you are born into a poor family. You want to be born into a rich family. Who wants to suffer? You are born into an environment where nothing works. If you are given the choice, would you have chosen this place? Certainly no. If you ask me, maybe would I have chosen it? I wouldn't see what is rosy on ground and then go and choose hardship. But because you had no choice, you found yourself where you are. It's now for you to make the best out of where you are. And the best thing you can do is to acknowledge that you're God. Don't be a fool. Don't think that you can achieve. You see, I have seen the example. The whole totality of your inheritance is with this world is the material on you, the clothes on you, everything you put on, even to the point of your death. You won't, even that one, when you are dead, they will remove it from your body and they wrap you with a wrapper. And you get, maybe as a Christian, you will get what you call a beautiful coffin for the ant to eat. Your bones, your everything will be gone. But your soul, would have departed to the Creator. And that's supposed to reign with Him till eternity. Amen. So, next one. So, be a wise person. Don't be a fool. Acknowledge the Lord your God as your Creator. Yes. God loves the righteous. God loves the righteous. Is the one, they are the people that take good care of the poor, the needy. James 1, 27, Matthew 23, 23. Luke 11, 40 to 41. Matthew 22, 37 to 39 that we, that we reviewed earlier. Huh? In, in political arena, remember it is not your zone, it is not your tribe. One thing I am a Yoruba man and proudly so, to God be the glory. But I hate I hated one thing that our people were saying in those days as if we were wiser than other tribes. But when I listen to other tribes speak, oh no, oh no, I know that we are equally gifted. So for one tribe to rise up and say, ah, we are wiser than them, we are doing you are he's a fool. <laughs> you want to. That's why I love what Omar Rodrigo once said. He said, when the West people, Western people will say we are wiser, we are wiser. I say, oh, can you compare the wisdom of a man who has the Eastern wisdom or joined it with Western wisdom? 
with somebody who just has a western widow and says claiming superiority over one so let's never claim superiority over one another we are equally gifted have you not even seen it in all and which tribe internationally the people that are genius they come from Igbo, they come from hausa they come from yoruba the scientists pure scientists reigning in america reigning in europe so it is spirit of pride that came upon Yoruba, and no wonder they are struggling today. The Lord will help us in Yahushua's name. We have sold that even to our generations after us. That's why many other tribes hated us. But may God forgive us, and may God also give those people the heart of forgiveness, knowing that those who pioneer such statements are speaking from ignorance. Amen. Yeah. Sign from heaven. Now. They are demanding signs that Christ should show them signs. Christ told them, you, when the, at any point in time, you know what the weather says and you can interpret it correctly. How come you are looking for for that sign that the one that will be given to you will be sign of Jonah? You know the sign of Jonah, of course. Jonah refused to go and until it was swallowed and the fish now vomited him. That's the sign. May you not go through torture before you acknowledge your God as a creator. In Yehoshua's name. Yep. And Christ, like I said, take note. One thing is fundamental about Christianity. It is about Christ's likeness. And what did Christ do through his ministration in this world? Christ said, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And what is the yeast? They didn't understand. He was speaking with them in uh, parable because the disciples didn't come with bread as they were going. They thought, it is when we get there, don't eat uh, the bread of the Sadducees. And no, 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 no. Christ is telling them, beware of the teachings and preachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. The teachers of the law. Pharisees, Pharisees and Sadducees are the teachers of the law. The difference between them is that Pharisees believed one thing, the other they believed in another. What is it? It's about resurrection. One part believed that there is resurrection. The other part believes that there is no resurrection. The other one, one part believed that Christ has come. The other believed that Christ has not come. They are still, in fact, I think it's both of them. They are still waiting for their Messiah. When Christ has come and they saw him, they rejected him. And Christ came again and was still correcting them about this idea of, sorry, this thing cannot, when I'm talking, I, mean, I hope those, uh, those who are preachers and teachers amongst you will understand. They will just have to each your nose and all that. When you are talking, I have a sensitivity to maybe the environment when I'm preaching and teaching. So pardon me, it's not deliberate. I don't enjoy it. Now, Christ came and was saying, Beware of the teachings of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. One of the teachings, Matthew 15, is that, look, they teach you, Christ started as early as Matthew 15 to say, Look, the Pharisees will teach you that bring money to the church of God. Bring money. Bring money. Forget about your parents. They may not even say it loudly, but the emphasis is that money has to come to God. And when the money comes to the church of God, then it is there you are blessed. But Christ told them there that if it, he said they were even teaching that if they give the money that is meant to take care of their parents and their children and their everybody, their siblings, their families to the church of God, that it is then that they are blessed. Christ reversed this. He said, go and take care of your parents. Go and take care of your children. Go and take care of your wives. Stay and take care of your family members. A man who fails to provide for his family, his relative, is worse than an infidel, than an unbeliever. Christ says, this is the opposite of what the rabbis were teaching. And what are we teaching in the church of God today? Bring the money. Bring your tithe. Things will be tight for you unless you pay your tithe. 
bring your first fruit. It's even interesting. Recently, one geo was preaching and teaching that well, now that things are hard, go and farm. When you farm finish, go and bring uh percentage of it to the church of God. You know it happened in uh, during the time of um, um Joseph. The people had nothing to do again. They sold themselves to the king, their land, everything they could they could give. And then Joseph now say, Okay, now that you've sold all your land, handed over your lands to the king, come and take the seat. You plant there. When you plant, you they forgot that aspect that Joseph, the king himself, still gave them seats to go and sow. So if the king is asking for something in return, at least it's an investment. If he's asking for something, one fifth is what the Joseph said they should bring back to the Pharaoh. You see, the king sold, and he wasn't reaping what he, from where he didn't sow, unlike what we are seeing in the Church of God today. Where the, this, this geo now say, go on and farm where you can bring certain percentage of it to the church. You see the craftiness; they sow nothing no, into your life, and they want you to bring. Part of what you have brought to them. So these are the teachings that Christ Himself was correcting right from the very. That's why we are reviewing this Bible together. Please go and read Matthew 15, and then read the 16 that we are we are taking care of now. Christ started correcting these teachings. Please go ahead. The yeast of the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. The teaching of the Pharisees uh -huh. and Sadducees, uh -huh. who are mine, uh -huh. Peter the Rock, uh -huh. authority. Okay, okay, and... okay. Christ was asking, Who am I? And until Peter was able to say, You are the you are the Son of God and the Messiah. And he said, Nobody could have said that except the Spirit of God is in him. You got it right. And you, to you, I will give the power. I give the power. And uh, upon the rock, or computer the rock, the church of God will be founded. Amen. He, Peter acknowledged Christ as the Messiah. A fool says in his heart, there is no God. But Peter acknowledged not only that Christ is the Son of God, but that he is the Messiah that will deliver the world. And he got it right. You can see of all the church people, it was Peter that is the Peter the Rock. Through Peter, God, Christ performed a lot of miracles. And the word of God remained steadfast. Please go ahead. Yes, Genesis 45. Okay, we are going to Genesis now. Yeah, 45 to 47, yes. Joseph wept. We are back. Known to his we are back to Joseph. Indeed, that's where we derive the type topic from. We are all sent to to serve God and to save fellow men. You see, Je Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers. Yes, he revealed himself. And he wept. Of course, who would not be emotional? Somebody who, who had been thought to be dead. Even when Joseph himself thought his father would have died. His wicked brother's actions brought him to where he was. And please go ahead. You are sent to save life. You are sent to save life. Let me start. Husband, you are sent to save your wife. Wives, you are sent to save your husbands. Husband and wives, you are sent to save your children. Children, you are sent to save your parents. Then children, husband and wife, you are sent to save your extended members of the family. Both sides, father side, mother side, your parents. You are sent, you see, in Yoruba land, they will say children are the insurance of the old age. You are not supposed to abandon your parents when they now have less capacity to take care of them. Still, your parents die. You owe them feeding. You owe them medication. You owe them clothing. You owe them shelter. You owe them affection. 
frequency in terms of visiting them. You owe them any every any everything good in life. Then in polygamous homes, you owe your extended larger families equal love. Not that it's just my father and my mother. No, 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 because you are in this different setting, a larger community, in a poly in polygamous homes. You owe them duty of care. Everybody until all those old ones are dead. And not only that, after they are dead, you, the conglomerate of the offsprings, you are so, you owe them yourselves duty of care. Not that, oh, our parents are dead, so we are scattered. No, 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 no. That's not God's will for us. So then the church of God, you owe your followers duty of care. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 to 15. That's what Christ himself says. I mean, the, the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 15, that look, the church should redistribute wealth. The church did Pharaoh not so in the life of the people before he's asking them to give him back one fifty. In fact, that one will be for preservation again in case calamity come, comes. Thank God for Joseph that God used to plan for them. Joseph was used as a savior for the Egypt and all on the, on the land of Canaan put together. Egypt, land of Canaan, and even beyond. He was created to save the people. And he did the work. Will you do your own? Amen. Whatever little capacity you are. Whatever little capacity you are. Whatever little position you have. Use it to bless others. Use it and do it as generously as is possible. Feasible for you without injuring yourself. Amen. It's only you that can determine. You know your capacity, you know your ability, you know what you can do that will not hurt you. Nobody says hurt yourself. Christ did not say, ask yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself. So you won't say you want to help others and then hurt yourself. You are sent to save. We are all sent to serve God and to save one another. One generation is sent to save the next generation. That's why God deposited offsprings in us. We bring them up, take good care of them until they are up and doing on their own. We are to care for them. Amen. Next. Family relationship is still there. Now, you know, I thought, I don't know whether it's in this forum or in that in the smaller forum, I thought something about family. There is an interface between generations. Thank God today I'm having that interface. My wife and I. Time was it that it was herself, myself, then by the special grace of God, the children started coming and today the children have become of age. They have become fathers. They have become parents themselves and now interface has come you know what is happening what is what is happening to the generations after generations is that they want to disconnect say yes yeah, so especially the way we the church have taught the people that just severe your relationship completely from your parents physically the Bible allows you to move away. If it's to move away, if it is, let me also, there is a caveat to everything. No two situations are the same. If your parents are well blessed, who says you must go and rent house? Uh, your own, you go and rent house first before you, why do you strain the resources that you have? Why don't you save it and build your own house and move straight to your own house? But because you have been taught to, to severe your parents become enemies to you. The moment you are married, it's only you and your wife or husband. Then you put yourself into an untold hardship that God has not placed. He has given you deposits of blessings that you can still be using until you move. I always 
Sad example of a colleague of mine who said he they said he never knew what it meant to rent because he moved from his own father's house. So he married even in the family place until they were living together in good relationship, communism, until it was time for him to really vacate. He vacated. But to some people, they didn't have that luxury. They just have to move. That's okay. Move and start your life. God will be with you. Why? But why do you put yourself in this? So understand where you are, whether your situation demands that you move immediately or you have the but the intolerance or the teachings of your church or churches have already indoctrinated you to be enemies to your children because you don't want to have any relationship. I want to tell you, you are sent to save your parents. God has sent them to save you to the point you are. You must reciprocate. That's life. There is an interface. That's why I always plead to our children and say, look, we are not going to lord it. God forbid that we lord it over you. We know the knowledge of, they will have the knowledge of the word of God and the spirit of God is in us. It's not for us to go and dictate how you manage your day-to-day relationship. That's where the severance is. We cannot come to your, if we come to your house, where you ask us to stay, it's where we will stay. What you give us to eat is what we will eat. What you give to us, everything, just take good care of us to the best of your ability. That's all. We are not, and thank God we are not beggars too. We are not here to be a burden on you. We are here to interface with you, to see our children's children, which the Bible says the glory of grandparents, to play with them, to dine with them, to surround our tables so that we all enjoy ourselves. That's what the Bible tells me. I'm not here to come and say, you and your husband, or I'm not here to demand your bedroom. You are the landlord now. I am a guest. We are guests. We are your parents. Anytime we come, we are guests. We have to stay in the guest room. This is a situation, I always say, a situation where you are a guest in your own home. Everybody has to have limits. We are not interested in how much you used to cook your soup or give us good soup to eat, Jerry, as you give to yourselves. Let us felicitate together. Let us live in love and in a in, in communal relationship together. Look at Joseph and all his brethren, a polygamous home. You now know that that's polygamous home. Did Joseph separate? Did he take Benjamin alone? That is from his mother. He fed all of them, he took good care of them. Are you learning? You that you say you are a Christian, this is the Bible now that we are dissecting. We are combing the Bible now for you to see what Christ did and what Joseph did, what Moses did, what everybody did. Amen. The days severe their religion. Even after death, you see, Jacob came to Egypt and after his, his body was returned, even Joseph, after he died, he said his body has to be taken back to his people. And you are saying, you have to be able to know where God wants to be. Management of your day-to-day life is what God wants. Especially when you become couples. Not that your parents will now totally be strangers in your home. Your brothers and sisters are now strangers in your home. Your, um, your um, stepfather, your stepbrothers, your step everything becomes strangers in the home that the Lord has given to you. Oh, that's, that's not Christianity. That's not the intention of God. God wants us to live in love with one another. He does not even look at every child is the child of is a pity our mothers have sown the seed of discord in our lives because of the 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 the, the, the greed for gain that they are looking. Everybody is competing. It's my child that I want, is my child, is my child, is my child. Yes, this example of where somebody ah, is it the the child of that one alone that you will be praising that to the man who no? Put you see, it's creating sense of competition, create that was not initially there, and then that one becomes conscious. Hey, he wants to dominate us. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. And then everybody is now competing. Our mothers, may God forgive you all. May Almighty Father for you cost havoc. You wreck havocs, havocs in families. Because 
You see, oju orun te ye fo lai fara kan ra won. My top is not the top of my brother. My brother's top is not the top of my sister. The <clears throat> Everybody has his own top, the level that God will take them to. We, we, and we all get there if only we don't get incited against one another to the point that we'll now be comparing the top of another one with my own top. I'm in level one. So, and then, how, how, why should that one be in level two? If God has said, said that he's going to be the one that would be the overall star of the family, what would you, I mean, what can you do about it? You, know, you see the situation, but our mothers have sown that this seed of discord that is a competitive, just competition, competition. But it's not competition. It's a question of you knowing your limit. Know where God wants you to be. Please go ahead. Joseph gave the best of the Now, land. when Joseph was to treat his people, his entire relatives, he treated, treated them equally. The father did. Look at what Joseph did for everybody. Everybody in his family. Nobody was left out. Yes, he beefed up what belongs to Benjamin and so on and so forth. But because out of that sense of loss or losses that he has encountered with Benjamin, but that notwithstanding, everybody and now look at what happened even when it was going on. He said when they were going on the road, they were calling him among them. They said, Never quarrel with yourselves, Zoo. Me, I have forgiven you. It is not your own making what happened to It takes a broad, a large heart to be able to interpret these things. God has sent me here for a purpose to save you, to save Egypt, not even you, to save the entire land then. So I understand that message. So if you are calling the blame culture, hey, hey, Reuben will say, but I told you not to do it. Judah will say, but if not for me that I said don't kill him, hey, um, Simeon and uh, Levi uh, that that killed um, the whole men, female men in the land that they dwelt in. Uh, if not that you people have, of course you remember that Jacob still paid them, I mean the, 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 the final blessings, you remember <laughs> destruction never left left Levi and um, and Simeon's uh, place, and they will serve. You know, they were the one that pretended to be okay, and they were the one that led that coup that led to the killings of the innocent people. But at the end of the day, then, and if you did not cause that thing to happen, brethren, that's why I say, when you are in your dark hour, just look unto God. Blame nobody, because your wife will forsake you. Your husband will forsake you. Your children self can forsake you. Friends will so forsake you as they forsook Jacob and uh, Job. And many, many things will happen. Eh? Eleven brothers, I mean, ten brothers forsook Joseph. Eventually, they sold him out for God's purpose to be realized, but they didn't know. And they now said, don't go and be quarreling among no blame culture. In your family today, don't blame, don't entertain blame culture. If only my sister had helped me, if only my brother had helped me, if only my... Nobody will do it. Did the Bible not say there is no good person? Did you not read it in today's uh, Psalm 14? And did you not read it here from Christ that said there is no good somebody somewhere unless God lays it upon somebody that to do good to anybody? He won't do it. Please go ahead. Jacob relocated to Egypt. Eventually. There's nothing wrong with Jack and you. Everybody is looking for good grounds for, I mean, greener pastures. Ooh, nothing wrong. Ooh. The only thing is let your Jack Pine be led. Let it be that is God that is leading you to where you are going. No, you are not, not leading yourself. I told you the father of Abraham left. For greener pastures. He was heading towards Canaan. He didn't even get there. He died on the way. You will not die on the way to your destiny. He died. But God, that same step that the father took, Japan's step, 
God gave it to us. Now God himself now spoke to Abraham that, look, go along the way your father was going. Those of you who are running away from your father who are trying to guide you and trying to say, you say, you don't even want to have anything to do with them. Fathers are very important in this matter. Just as your mother's instructions are as crucial. Fathers are very, you see, fathers are the visionary ones that, you know, guide. He knows the responsibilities behind. He knows he could not meet them at the point where he was. He need to, needed to move to a place where he could garner more blessings for him to be able to satisfy his family. So he had to move. Then God now told Abraham, the path that your father started, continue. That Canaan land that he was aiming at. I mean, I pray for you. I pray for myself. The good path that I have started, that I'm, I'm unable to attain. Even if I have gone, God will lead my children beyond that place and take them to that good path that, that I desire for them in Yehoshua's name. The desire that the good path that you desire for your children, God will lead them there. Even if you have left this world, it doesn't matter. There is continuity in matters of God. That's why it's only God that is continuous. Present continuous. He was present in the past, is now, is forever. So that's why you don't even depend upon your fathers. Because if your father died, you think you know, life has ended. The death of your father, the death of your mother, the death of your parents, the death of your helpers, physical helper that you have seen does not amount to anything before God because he will raise other helpers to take you, to get you to the promised land. You will get there, I shall get there in your house. Please go ahead. Give special gift to his father. Yes, you can see uh, the relationship we are still talking about. Abraham, Joseph gave special gift, special land. You remember he went to Pharaoh and said, my people are God, say, choose the best. I pray, wherever we go, wherever our children go, our offsprings go, children's children from generation to generation, I mean, God will so specially favor them. The king, the government, everything of that place will favor them in Yehoshua's name. They will give them the best, and the best shall be their portions in Yehoshua. Stop competing. Pray for the people that God is raising now. When God is raising them, pray for them. Your own time is coming. Also pray that, Lord, let my time come. There's nothing wrong if you pray for yourself. You can pray not necessarily with envy. No, pray that God, as you are blessing like what you are, bless me too. Bless me even tremendously in Yehoshua's name. Amen. Next. Do not blame yourself. Yes, I was taking that. Genesis 46. Mm -hmm. The one thing that baffles you know that when God Jacob, God bless you, when Jacob was to leave, two things happened. God appeared to him. You see, if you are on the side of God, will show you. Let me tell you, my movement in this world is God that is directing me to. I was in Lagos for almost 50 years, if not more. And on return, it was God that said, move. And where I moved to, he, there are a lot of challenges there. Oh, to the point that I was asking, ah, God, <laughs> this challenge is so much. Oh. All right? And yet, God was with me, solving those challenges. Amen. May God continue to be. God appeared to and spoke with me. There is no place I've ever been that God had not given me an indication to go. Let God be your guide. God spoke to Jacob to confirm. God will confirm your movements before you take the steps in Yehoshua's name. No place. That's why I'm at peace wherever I go. Today now, I'm freer than I used to be. I can move around. I can play around. I can do anything around. Because God Almighty is my guide. So God will continue to guide every one of us in the Hoshua's name. Next. Jacob made Joseph a reunion. You see a reunion, family reunion, family reunion, family relationship. I keep saying it. Don't separate yourself. Oh, many of you that will go and go forever. It's not according to the will of God. In the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, it also. 
Go and preach the word of God. That's what God sent you. It is a go and separate yourself. When you do that, remember your home. Yes. Jesus spoke to Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Go Pharaoh ahead. Pharaoh authorized and kept his livestock. The second him. thing that happened to Jacob, even when he relocated, was that Pharaoh, you know, entrusted his livestock. <laughs> Pharaoh authorized that Joseph chose the right place, the best place. And then Pharaoh now said, Take, tell your parents to take good care of my stock. Ah, may my children, all our children, bring us special favors in Yahushua's name. Look at it's Joseph that God used the most. Whoever God has chosen in your, in your family to use the most, two things. Accept that person. Acknowledge God. Thank God for him. And that person too. Acknowledge the position that God has said to save the family, to save the family. I always say that even in our own family, I always say children that will save our family, different children that would take our family to greater heights, God will give us. Whosoever the Lord has chosen in the family, you may be the one. Please play that role. I beg you, I beg you, that's why you are sent. That's why you are sent. That's why you are sent. Play that role. Those roles and the resources, everything with which you will do it, God will provide. God provided it for Joseph. Play, but be ready to play that. God could give Joseph all those things. He could just have picked Benjamin and kept quiet. But he played the role for everybody in his family. Play your own role. God has sent you to save others. Play your own role. It's on record for Joseph today. It's on record for Nehemiah. It's on record for Esther. It's on record for Ruth. It's on record for Christ. It's on record for Paul. It's on record for Peter. Play those roles that God wants you to play to save people's lives. Food, medical, anything, education, anything that you have the capacity to do, please never renege. Do it, yes. Joseph was one thirty years old. Mm -hmm. Total forgiveness. The church is supposed to save life. Amen. One Please. thing, God bless you, man. One thing that should have made Joseph not to accomplish his goal would have been unforgiveness. But Joseph epitomized total forgiveness. Total, total, as if it never happened. He even said, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. So, don't blame yourself. I don't blame you. I mean, all that you intended was that I should not rise, that I should be dead instead of being a savior. You know, Joseph um, foreshadows Christ. He was a savior to his people. Be a savior to your people. As it was in the beginning, so it is now. Be a savior at this generation that you are to your people, to your nation, to human race, not a destroyer. Unforgiveness will have made David and Joseph never to accomplish it. If you remove that from your life, surely your life will be smooth sailing. Never treasure unforgiveness. It breathes the anger of God. The second thing is Remember the downtrodden. Anybody below you, position-wise, financial-wise, intellectual-wise, um, uh, spiritual-wise, anybody below you, do everything to be lifting them up. Encourage them. Don't downlook them. God hates it. God hates people downlooking another people that he made. That's why God is always on the side of the poor. Amen. Yes, ma'am. The rich supposed to save life. The rich is supposed to save the poor. The church is supposed to save its people, everybody, including even the rich. The Bible says, so that the rich will not get richer. Let them collect from the rich and give to the poor. And even from what they collected, the rich will still benefit from it. But according to his need, you know that the people's needs differ. The rich may not need money. But the poor certainly needs money. 
But the rich needs prayer, continuous for continuous supply. The church will pray, and God will answer and bless them the more to be able to bless the other people. God does not bless you to, uh, to acquire and uh, stock the whole thing in this world, just bless and be a blessing to others. But in Genesis 12, 1 to 4, not tells us, I will bless you and will be a blessing unto all nations. Amen. That's what God has said to us. This is the Bible we are reviewing. Go and read it. Genesis chapter 44 to 47. Matthew 16 that we read today. Psalm 14 that we read today. They are all there. Confirm all these things. I'm not going to be telling you all the topical stories that long, long stories that is all borders of rhetorics, suspension. You don't even know where to land. You don't even know the spiritual connotation or you don't have heaven's relevance. You see, all these things we are saying, when you are doing it, it is then you are doing the will of God and your place in heaven is being prepared for you. Altar call is not altar call in the sense, oh, come today, come tomorrow, come to the altar, we pray for No, 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 no. It is your habit. Everything you are not changing. What you used to do, you don't do anymore. That is evil. You don't do anymore. What is good, you now do. What is righteous, you follow. Amen. Hello. Next. Husband supposed to save you. Husband. Uh, we've talked about this. Husband, you have to save, save your life. You save your children. Save your siblings. Save your entire family. Amen. So we are all sent to save to serve God and to save one another. And how do you serve God? Know his word. Follow him. Preach, teach the word of God. Matthew 28, 16, verse 16. Then, how do you love your neighbor as yourself? James 1, 27. Matthew 23, 23. Matthew 22, 30, 20, 37 to 39. So, Practically, churches, you are supposed to save life, not to kill life. When you are now beginning to minister that, people should be driven away from the church because they didn't pay tithes. Hey, the soul that God has redeemed, God will ask you one day. He will give account to God, not to us. We can't judge you. And those of you who have been exploited, forgive them more. For they knew not what they did. They didn't know. Some of them didn't know. Some of them knew. Even those who knew. Christ knew that the people who were torturing him knew not what they were doing. Some did it intentionally. Some did it out of ignorance. They intended it for good for Joseph. But it turned out to be for good for him because God is using them. To manifest just as God used Judas to. That's why I always pray, God, use me for good testimonies. Herod's, uh, Pharaoh's, is it Pharaoh or Herod's heart that was hardened? God says, I did it for a purpose to fulfill, to manifest my power. If he didn't, if he easily allowed the Israelites to go, maybe they wouldn't have understood what God has did for them, has done for them, rather. And but because God is with the Israelites, they are accomplished. You will accomplish your goal. You will finish well. The race is tough. But all of us, as the Lord God Almighty lives, we shall finish well and reign with him till eternity. We are from eternity. I told you before God deposited you in your parents' body, before you give birth to your sojourn, your, your pilgrimage, you will finish it going back to him. But where will you spend it? Hell, fire, or heaven. All these things that God says you should do that we are telling you today are the things that will determine where you end it all. May we end it all well in Yehoshua's name. May we reign with Christ at the second coming in Yehoshua's name. Please remember to share these messages and thank you for listening. And uh, this message is number 23. And um, we'll be numbering them now so that you will know the ones you have listened to. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you 
Daddy, we worship you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for this ministration this morning. Accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Almighty Father, as we go today, the grace to remember, to meditate upon all these things that you've taught us, grant unto us. The grace to actualize them, grant unto us. Let us live righteous lives today in Yahushua's name. The matter of Nigeria, we have analyzed it. Maybe we have seen it. You know, jumping, 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 manipulating one another. Lord, just have mercy. And what you want to do, please, don't renege. Do it for us. Let Nigeria be better. And the grace for us to retrace our steps back to you and do justice as you demanded. Grant unto us all. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In Yehoshua's mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. Press the like button. Just press it. Encourage us too. You see, I've been talking for almost an hour. I'm compressing it so that you don't use so much data. Then encourage me also so that this message can reach others. Have a wonderful time.